It is inevitable that all of us will die one day. It's simply unavoidable. We will all meet our ends, and I'm sure all of us have dreams and aspirations for things we want to achieve and experiences we want to have in our lives. Being on my deathbed and dwelling on what I should have done differently or being unproud of who I am is not something I hope to do in my future. So recently I've done a lot of research into understanding what people who are soon to die regret most in life. And I found a common theme among many of the regrets people have that I don't think gets talked about enough. So what is that common theme amongst the regrets people on their deathbed have? Well, it's allowing the ego to dictate the course of life too much, which in turn does not allow you to do the things you really want to do. So now let's go over some of these regrets. Number one, I wish I pursued my dreams and aspirations and not what others expected of me. This is probably one of the most common regrets. This happens when you care more about how your life looks to others than how it feels to you. The ego is the part of you that cares about how your life looks to others. So if you allow the ego to take the driver's seat, you may find yourself in a position that may be miserable to you, but others accept or even look up to. An example of this would be trying to become a doctor because your parents wanted you to, even though you have no interest in being a doctor and deep down you would much rather be a painter or something. Number two, I should have spoken my mind more instead of holding back and resenting things. This is a classic one. People thinking they have a good idea or a solution to a particular problem, yet holding it back due to fear of what others would think. This could be something as simple as being too afraid to raise your hand in class, even though you think you know the answer, or it could be something deeper, such as a relationship issue, in which the issue could have easily been fixed if you had spoken your mind, but instead you held back in hopes the other person would step up to resolve the issue, and they too were just like you, who wanted to say something that would fix the problem but held back, and this holding back on both sides leads to the issue never being solved, which over time leads to resentment. Number three, I wish I made more time for friends and family. They're important to you, right? Spend more time with them, even if that means taking some extra time off work or extra time pursuing your goals. If you love them, spend time with them, even if that means making a personal sacrifice. Number four, I wish I said I love you more. I really like this one. For a lot of people in our lives, even if we actually do love them, it can feel weird to say it because we fear the other person's response, even if it's our own brother or sister or best friend or something. But just thinking, if my brother or one of my close friends told me out of the blue they loved me, I'd feel very happy about it, even though I'd know it had been uncomfortable for me to say first. I think saying the words, I love you, go a long way for the person receiving the words, even though the interaction may be a little awkward. I'm going to take this regret people have to heart and say I love you to the ones close to me more. Number five, I wish I tuned the world out more. This one can be taken in a number of different ways. In relation to the ego, this could mean tuning out the expectations of others or the mold society wants in order to focus on your true passions. This one is really about prohibiting unwanted outside influences moving you in a way that you don't want to be moved, so you can live true to yourself. Now, the next two are very similar, so I'll group them together. Number six, I wish I had taken more chances. And number seven, I wish I had spent more time outside my comfort zone. The ego seeks comfort, and once its identity is established, it seeks to stay that way, and any activity that threatens the ego becomes uncomfortable to do, which naturally causes us to not want to do that activity. Maybe this is making a career change. Maybe this is cutting off a relationship. Maybe this is doing a really thrilling activity that sounds really fun but is kind of risky. Think about the greatest moments in your life. Maybe it's a fantastic accomplishment or just a really awesome experience. Well, I can just about guarantee you that you had to step outside your comfort zone in order to do it. We don't grow unless we step outside our comfort zones. If you never leave your comfort zone, you'll live a very, very unfulfilling life. All of these common deathbed regrets we've talked about involve stepping outside the comfort zone. So embrace the uncomfort of life and start actively trying to do things outside your comfort zone. Number eight, happiness is a choice. I wish I knew that earlier. 
This is the most important one on the list, and this is why I saved it for last. Do you notice how all of the things people regret when they die is based off the things they didn't do? It's not what they did, it's what they did not do. And there will always be things in life that you wish you did differently. You can't be perfect. It's impossible to be perfect, and the ego is the part of you that strives to be perfect. It dwells on the things you did wrong so you can be better in the future. And from an evolutionary standpoint, this is a very helpful mechanism. But when it comes to happiness, true happiness, it doesn't do any good. True happiness comes from embracing the moment. True happiness is allowing yourself the freedom to simply just be. And this can be done no matter your circumstances, whether you're rich or poor, pretty or ugly. It doesn't matter. Anyone can do it. It's just a matter of pushing the ego aside and embracing what truly is. It's so easy to get in the mindset of, once I have this, then I'll be happy. Or once I achieve this, I'll be happy. But no matter what you have or who you are, your ego will always want something more. The ego isn't you. It's just a pattern of thoughts that pop into your mind based on your biology and your circumstances. And once you recognize that, your life will be changed. And you can be happy anytime you want. It's important to accept that fuck-ups will happen. It's okay to play video games and watch Netflix and eat junk food every now and then. You'll never be perfect, so stop trying to be. Think about what you truly want to do, what truly interests you, and who you truly want to spend time around and go do that. This has been the most common deathbed regrets. As we've already gone over, the regrets come as a result of allowing the ego to have too large of an impact on the course of our life. In order to not have similar deathbed regrets of our own, it is important to be able to know how the ego operates so we're able to live a life more true to ourselves. Check out my video, What is Ego? for more information on the mechanics of the ego. Also check out my video about ego death, as it gives insights on what consciousness is like when your ego is completely gone. And it also tells you how you can have your own ego death experience. An ego death is a life-changing experience for most people who have them. And it often really gets an individual in line with their true self, which in turn will make them less likely to have these deathbed regrets. That's all I got for this video. I hope it helped you in one way, shape, or form. Please give it a like and drop a comment for that algorithm boost. And if you're interested, please check out my Patreon. I run a book club on there and I'd love to have more people participating in it. So check that out. And as always, guys, have a great day and peace.